to the right and honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Dear Mr. Prime Minister, my name is Louis Sachs. Though you don't know me, I had the pleasure of getting to meet you a few weeks ago when you spoke at an event for Sija in Ottawa. But I'm the rabbi of a congregation here in Toronto. I wanted to reach out and write to you today to express my own thoughts and concerns, my fears and feelings of living today as a Jew in Canada. Though I speak for myself, I know, however, that many of my own fears are shared not only by those in my congregation, but by Jewish citizens across this nation, your nation. Now, I must admit, I didn't vote for you. I'm not a Canadian. But I've lived here for six years. I'm married to a Canadian. I'm the father of a Canadian, soon to be the father of another Canadian. And I very much know that my feelings are felt by so many of the Jews in this, war, in this community, in this country. Anti-Semitism, as you are aware, has been an ongoing issue in Canada. One that's becoming more and more critical in recent years as cases of hatred against the Jewish community continues to rise. In 2022, the most recent year for which we have data, more than 67% of all religiously motivated hate crimes were committed against the Jewish people. More than 50% increase since 2020. 67% of the hate crimes in your country were targeted against less than 1.5% of the population. You speak often about the importance of combating anti-Semitism, yet respectfully, I want you to know that you share a responsibility in its rise. Last week, a synagogue and Jewish organization in Montreal were firebombed. Jewish schools had bullets fired at their doors. You spoke out. But the words you use are not the right ones. The words you choose often inflame the hatred and division that continues to grow in Canada. I don't want to be cynical, but far often it seems that every time you mention anti-Semitism, you throw in Islamophobia, even though it's not the other way around. If I were being cynical, I would suggest that it might be that it's a larger group of people that can vote for you. Just yesterday, a Jewish school here in Toronto had to be evacuated after a bomb threat. The email to the office stated that many Jews would die. Well, I know this week you've issued statements condemning anti-Semitism, your words continue to divide the Jewish and Muslim communities of Canada using rhetoric that is not only divisive, but morally, it's questionable. Days before this bomb threat, you publicly accused Israel of killing women, children, and babies. Now, everyone has the right to offer whatever criticism of Israel or any nation that they want. But as a leader, you have a responsibility. A responsibility to ensure that nuance and truth are the core of your statements. As a leader, you have a responsibility to bring people together, not to score points with one demographic at the expense of another. Hamas targets women, children, and babies. Your statements of equivalence are reprehensible. Not only that, they're responsible for the increase in anti-Semitism. Your words further divide rather than helping all Canadians feel safe in our streets, in our places of worship and in our schools. The last six years, I've paid a lot in taxes for schools my daughter can't attend. So we fund the Catholic school system. I pay for the public school system, and I choose to pay more to send her to a Jewish school, which now, because of statements like yours, cost us even more to have officers to protect, to have security, because of the constant threats they're receiving. Hamas deliberately targets women, children, and babies. Israel targets Hamas. Hamas hides behind women, children, and babies. In general, I've been quite impressed with the Canadian education system. But the moral math you and other leaders have expressed is not only distorted, but dangerous. You know there this already. You know already there are those that are targeting the Jewish community in Canada because of what's happening in Israel. And yet you, you know this, and you continue to make statements that will only increase that hatred and that divide. Canadian Jews are afraid. It's in the lifetime of members of my synagogue who witnessed when the St. Louis reached the shores of Canada, when Jews were fleeing the persecution of Europe, the Nazi gas chambers. 
that Canada responded by sending them back, back to be persecuted, back to be murdered. A few years ago, you told us how you rose in the House of Commons to issue a long overdue apology to the Jewish refugees Canada turned away. By issuing this apology, you said it was your sincere hope that Canada can shine as a, a light on this painful chapter of our history and ensure its lessons are never forgotten. You apologized for the government's response. None is too many. I said this then and I'll say it now. I don't want your apologies, I don't want your words on behalf of a government you weren't a part of. I want to see you and your government do better, be better. Sadly, I'm not seeing that. In the Jewish tradition, each week we read words from the Torah, from our sacred text. This week in synagogues, we read from Parsha Toldot, the story of Jacob and Esau, brothers who fought, brothers who had hatred. It would be easy to paint one as good and one as bad, to paint their conflict as simple. Yet so many of the Jewish commentators through the ages try to find nuance in this story, understanding for both sides. The Malbim, a 19th century scholar, offers insight into this story, emphasizing that Isaac loved Esau because of the strength he represented, while Rebekah loved Jacob because she valued truth above all else, having grown up in a house of lies and dishonesty. The Malbim seeks to understand and emphasizes us the importance of recognizing different perspectives, the intricacies of relationships. The lesson today is crucial, where narratives and actions are too often oversimplified. As Prime Minister, your words carry immense weight. They have the potential to shape perceptions, influence opinions, and in the worst of cases, justify hatred and violence. In complex geopolitical situations, it's all the more important for our leaders to act responsibly, to speak with knowledge and understanding. Simplistic and inflammatory rhetoric that fails to acknowledge these complexities serves only to exacerbate tensions and divisions. As a leader in the Jewish community, I've often pushed my congregation to think about the other side, to think about those innocent Palestinians who are victims of this conflict. So often your words don't seek to understand anything, but are a soundbite that simply inflame division and hatred. Israel's enemy is not the children of Palestine, not the Palestinian children, but Hamas. Hamas who hides behind their children. Hamas who murders our children. Hamas who so violently attacked, so barbarically attacked Israel on October 7th that it took until this week to find out that one of Canada's own, Vivian Silver, was murdered on October 7th rather than kidnapped. Because her remains, like the remains of so many, were so disfigured, it took this long to find her. Your responsibility extends beyond addressing past mistakes of governments before you. It involves ensuring that your statements and your government do not contribute to the very hatred and division we're striving to overcome. As a leader, your words have the power to either bridge divides or to deepen them. I urge you, Mr. Prime Minister, to consider the impact of your statements on all Canadians, including the Jewish community. In a time when Jewish Canadians feel increasingly unsafe, it's imperative that our leaders speak with accuracy. It's imperative that our leaders speak with sensitivity. It's imperative that you speak with a commitment to bring people together rather than driving them apart. I ask for you, to please reflect on your actions and your deeds, on your words. I ask you to do better and to be better. I ask for your leadership to show truth and nuance, to seek to unify our diverse nation, to help all of us to live in a Canada where each community feels safe, respected, and valued. Thank you. Shabbat shalom.